Hey, thanks for tuning in. Today I wanted to talk with you about one of the most frequent questions I get about Studio One, which is how it supports third-party VSTs. Now, I posted a video about this about four years ago, but I figured it was time for an update and to go a little bit deeper. In this video, I'll be using Studio One's Mac OS version, but the features and functions are similar in the Windows version. Keep in mind that everything I'm going to explain today is in Chapter 2 of the Studio One 3 User's Manual as well. Let's start off by taking a look at how VSTs are supported in the various versions of Studio One 3. Now, as you can see here, Prime, which is the free version of Studio One, does not support third-party VSTs. Artist does support third-party VSTs, provided that you purchase the add-on module, which is $80. Now, keep in mind that Artist does come with the PreSonus plugins, which gives you plenty of power out of the box. And if you own Studio One Professional, you have the ability to add third-party VSTs. Now, when you start up Studio One, it goes through the process of scanning for VST files. Now, this goes by pretty fast, so if you want to take a look, you can go to the View menu, select Additional Views and Messages, and you can actually scroll through the messages that come at startup. Now, you can see here that Studio One successfully scanned for the VSTs on my system, but let me show you how we set this up. Now, before we get started, it's important to know that you only have to tell Studio One about the location of VST2 plugins. AUs, VST3s, and Rewire-enabled plugins have their own preset file paths, so you don't have to tell Studio One about those manually. Studio One will automatically scan for those. But let's take a look at how we tell Studio One about where to look for VST2 plugins. Now, first you'll need to get to Preferences, so you can do that by selecting it in the Studio One menu or by clicking anywhere in the Setup area on the home page. Next, you want to select Locations and VST Plugins. Now, we have two options here. The first is Scan at Startup, which we definitely want to have checked. And the second is Reset Blacklist. Now, this is important because if you have a plugin that continues to fail at startup, Studio One puts it on the blacklist. So once you've corrected the issue with the failed plugin, you'll want to click Reset Blacklist and Restart Studio One so they can scan that plugin again. Now, there are two ways you can tell Studio One about where your third-party VST2 plugins reside. The first method is you can click the Add button and tell Studio One where the VST folder resides on your computer. And you can see once you do this, it shows up in your location list. The second method is much easier. You can actually drag and drop the folder right into the Locations window. And again, there it is in your Locations list. Now I'm removing that location because I already have mine set up. Now once you tell Studio One about a new VST location, you're going to have to restart Studio One so that it can scan for those VSTs. And that's how you set up VST2 locations in Studio One. Now, one cool thing here is if you keep your VSTs organized in folders named for each vendor, Studio One will show those VSTs in vendor folders when you look at them in the Effects browser. And that's the deep dive into how Studio One handles third-party VSTs. Thanks for watching, and I hope this information was helpful. Please don't hesitate to post questions in the comments below or email me at the address listed here. If you like what you saw, please take a second to click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching and good luck with your home studio.